A lot of people have been wondering why the T-14 Armada, like you see on screen, has never actually arrived in Ukraine and has been used yet. And there's actually a pretty simple answer to it. The Russians don't have the money, nor the number of T-14 Armadas, to actually send them in. Now that's something that's going to come to a shock to a lot of people, and if you had been checking in on this about 5 or 6 years ago, you would have heard the Russian government say that 2300 of these T-14 Armadas would be in service by around 2020 to 2021 according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. But it never happened. Even to this day, there are only around 20 of these T-14 Armadas in the entirety of the Russian Federation, and the question is, why in the world are there not a lot of these, and why are the Russians having to use newer tanks? Well, we'll get to that in a second, actually, about the newer tanks. The answer to this question, to make it incredibly simple, is the prohibitive cost of a T-14 Armada. Just to put it into perspective, the Russian military spends an incredibly small amount per year. As we can see here, according to this chart from worldpopulationreview.com, the Russian government before this war had an annual budget of around $48 billion. That means that it was outdone per year in military budget by the Japanese, the Germans, the UK, India, Saudi Arabia, China, and the United States, and even had a close runner-up in South Korea. So that gives you a pretty good idea of how little the Russian government actually spends on their military per year, and considering that a T-14 Armada, according to the figures that the public has been able to get, um, is around $4.6 million for a single T-14 Armada. If we pull up the cost of an M1A2 Abrams, we'll see that it is actually um, a little bit more, but still at the same time, you do have to keep in mind, the United States has an annual budget of $750 billion per year. And so it makes a lot of sense for our tanks to be a little bit more expensive, considering that they are, of course, of a higher quality. But this also gives you an idea of how little the Russian military is actually eking by. To sit there and have a military budget of $48 billion and expect to have 2,300 of the newest and probably most advanced tanks in the world is pretty outlandish. Even so, we don't know if this tank is actually good or not, considering that there's only been about 20 of them produced and there's very little public information on them. We don't know if these things are riddled with problems. The only time that the public sees these things often is during the May 9th Victory Day parades that occur every single year. So we have no idea how capable this tank really is. So this leaves Russia with these completely out of the picture because they may as well not even exist. So what do they really rely on? Well, they rely largely on T-80 BVMs, like you can see the picture of right here. Credit to armyrecognition.com for this picture. And also T-72 B-3s, which make up the bulwark of the Russian forces inside of Ukraine. Now these on the surface, they look incredibly modern. They look like they have some kind of explosive reactive armor on the turrets. They have explosive reactive armor saddlebags on the side. And all in all, it looks like a fairly modern tank. It looks like something you would expect to be used by a first-rate military. But the problem is, is that these tanks are incredibly old. Under all of this armor, and under what looks like an impressive main battle tank, is one of the oldest, most decrepit, and I guess you could say deficient tanks the world has ever seen, the T-72A. This is what is under all of that. If you were to take off all of the armor packages that have been strapped onto these T-72s decade after decade, you will find that this is what's underneath. And the T-72 actually entered service in 1970. Now that's not bad considering that the US M1 Abrams went into service in the 1970s as well, but the problem with that is that unlike the M1, uh, M1 Abrams, which later evolved all the way into the M1A2 variants that we see today, the T-72 as a base vehicle has not really seen a lot of modifications and upgrades to its firepower or mobility, unlike the M1 Abrams. As you can see here, I'll pull up a real quick picture of an M1 Abrams from 1979. Uh, and hopefully this will pull up the right version of the Abrams. We can see right here a picture from Business Insider India of an M1 Abrams, and there are a lot of differences with this Abrams and the one that is in service today. First off, this one uses the rifled 105mm gun as compared to the modern version of the M1A2, which hopefully we can get a picture of right here. 
This M1A2 has an entirely redesigned turret, similar shape, but um, it, it kind of extended in height so that way you can make room for the breach and also let it maneuver around correctly. It uses a 120mm smoothbore gun, unlike the M1 Abrams, the first iteration of the tank, that used a smaller turret and also a 105mm rifled gun. In fact, there's been a lot of uh, armor modifications to the M1 Abrams in between this picture of the M1 Abrams at Fort Knox in 1979 and the picture of of this M12 Abrams in some unknown location, most likely in the Middle East. Unlike the M1 A, uh, the M1 series that's had a lot of upgrades and modifications to it over the years, the T72, under all of this explosive reactive armor, has had very little changes. In fact, the gun is, I believe, exactly the same, rather than there's been a small variation, so that way you can fire some more higher penetration rounds, but beyond that, not a lot has been changed under the surface on this tank. And so you can kind of get an idea that these tanks are not good whatsoever, especially considering that they are that old. And not a lot has been done beyond the armor packages to make these more modern and more relevant. Now, if we were to go and look at, say, um, how these things are actually standing up against Stugnas, if y'all watch the nightly stream, which if you're new and watching this video right now, I highly suggest you watch those. You will see loads of footage of these kinds of Russian main battle tanks being wiped off the surface by a simple Stugna. And when you really think about that, you've got to think, these tanks are, at this point, around 50 years old under the surface. And not only that, all they have is some extra tacked on armor. Everything else is the way it was. And so if it gets hit by a modern anti-tank guided missile system like a Stugna, a Javelin, or anything for that matter, it's going to go up in a ball of flames. And the honest truth is, is that this is the best that Russia can afford. These were the best tanks you were seeing at the very start of the war that the Russian army could actually field. And even now, they're starting to run out of these. As we speak, the Russians are pulling out T-80Bs, which are the older version of the T-80BVM. It looks honestly about as decrepit as the T-72A once you get into the pictures of it. And they're also pulling out tanks that aren't even in these two series that the Russians are largely using. Um, they're pulling out, uh, I guess you could say for brand new in terms of the war, T-62Ms. If you know anything about the T-62, it has literally been around at this point for around 60 years. And while the T-62Ms are heavily upgraded for the most part, we can actually see a picture of one here. They are antiques. These things will not face up against any kind of modern firepower under any circumstances whatsoever. And the best example of this would be during the Battle of 72 Easting in the Gulf War, when the US M1 Abrams and the Bradleys, by and large the US military, went up against the Iraqis who were using nothing but T-72s and T-62Ms, and T-55s and a whole bunch of other Chinese stuff, but we won't get into that, that's for another video. All in all, the Americans suffered no losses rather than a single Bradley, and pretty much the entire Iraqi force that was at 72 Easting was wiped off the face of the earth, much like we'll be seeing these old and decrepit Russian tanks to this day being knocked off the surface. And so while it seems by and large that you would think the Russians would have an impressive and modern fighting force if you were to look at this single picture or this one, the truth is is that under all of this garb and, and, and showmanship, there's really nothing there. I thank you all so much once again for watching this video. If y'all have enjoyed, please make, make sure to subscribe because these videos should be coming out every single day of the week. I'm trying to do these often now, and I hope y'all have enjoyed yesterday's and today's. So with that, thank you all once again. I hope to see y'all on tonight's stream as I cover day 185 news of the war in Ukraine. And with that, I will see you all then. See you around, and take care.